Hello and welcome back to Tours and Tournaments. Two things from the comments that people wanted me to have a look at. First one was what's happened with Bruges here. Well, apparently it's usually held by House of Landerin, but in R1, House of Landerin is nowhere to be seen. So, what happened to them? Well, what happened to them is actually kind of interesting. So, they had it at the start of the game. It was then conquered by France, so France happened, the Carlings basically caused problems. Then it was granted and inherited. Now what's weird to me is if France is the one who took it, how the hell did it end up under our leash? I completely missed how this ended up under our leash then. Maybe it was under our leash to start, but then how could France conquer it? I need to go back and have a look at this because I missed the history of this. I don't remember seeing these two originally, but now they're part of our land. It, it's all very kind of weird stuff. Anyway, essentially, what happened to them was France. Now, another question was asked, what is that green stuff in East France here? Well, I originally looked at it and thought, oh, they must be at war with these guys over here, right? That makes sense. That, that's who they're at war with. Nah, 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 nah. They're actually at war with a Northman army. Yep. They have... Uh, I believe no titles. Yeah, the, the title is the Jarldom of the Northman Army. And they are not actually even at war with East Francia. They're at war with the Byzantine Empire because they are trying to take Crimea off of the Byzantine Empire, of course. I mean, come on. What else did you think was going to be happening here? They have brought along some other Norse rulers, so 400 troops. That's not good for you. 700 troops. I'm starting to feel like they might not win. Uh, 300 troops. Yeah, okay, so they don't have a lot of strength on their side, and they're against the Byzantines, who have 7,300. Uh, Mercuria, who have 3,200. East Francia, who have 3,100. And Great Moravia, who have 2,800. I, I feel bad for the Norseman army. I feel like they might lose. But, I appreciate that they're, you know, they're making an effort. Anyway, back down to us. We have heirs. That's the main thing for us right now. We have two heirs, which means that we have an heir and a spare, which is kind of traditionally what you want. You want an heir and then somebody, in case your heir dies, who can take over. Now, this does lead to a problem because they are both um, male, and under male preference, that means that the land will be sh uh, split um, between them. And it's male uh, preference confederate partition. Confederate doesn't matter too much because we are on the lowest tier of titles. Confederate, I think I've said it a few times, basically creates titles if they can be created. Because we're on the lowest tier of titles and we have the next tier above us um, control uh, like as our liege. So we're a count and we have a duke as our liege. Basically what this means is that it's just basically partition, which means your land is split equally. Which means if we have a look at this, we got Holland, we got... Neither as sticked, is that it? I'm I'm gonna butcher every pronunciation. I do apologize. I think I've been doing it so far, so no reason to change now. And then Ostfriesland over here would go to our second heir. This is obviously not ideal. This is why I quite like being a count, because or not count, a duke. Because if you're a duke, at least you keep the land. If you're a count, it splits your land into two. And you just lose it forever. It's not like they're your vassal. It's just they're some other guy, right? So we need to try and fix that. So ideally, by the end of this character's life, we would like to be a duke. We would like to be the Duke of Holland. Um, and actually, what's kind of annoying is we only want to be the Duke of Holland or Frisia. We don't want to be the Duke of both. Because if we're the Duke of both, then partition splits it and it gives them away. Now, we have another problem in that. I know, we're going a stack in problems. Which is that under Confederate partition, which splits your land in two, um, if it can. Right? If it can create two titles, it will split the land. Under Confederate partition, um, what will actually happen here is if we had both of them, even if we destroy a title, it will still split our land into two duchies and it will give them away. So... I want to get to partition. How do we do that? Partition. We need to get hereditary rule. Okay. Unlimited crown authority, but we can do that at literally any time. We just need 127 prestige. Um, okay. So, uh, where is uh, this thing? Is it in the next tier? Ah, it's in the next tier. So there's no way of us reaching partition until the year two, uh, 900... And then actually, at that point, we still have to wait a little bit because we have to wait another 
like how many every years it takes, like 30 years or something to get the tech. So let's say reasonably, right? Assuming we don't jump on everything straight away, we're not getting partitioned until 950 AD, which is well outside of this character's lifetime, right? That's It's just not going to happen. So, especially as we're a drunkard, and that's a known trait that just kills you, because um, there are quite a lot of drank to death things that can happen. So, with that in mind, what's our plan for getting a duchy? Well, actually, let me just double check something here. Do we control all of it? Ah, we do. We control all of Holland and all of Frisia, or a leash does, I should say. The reason I was checking that is if we only had half of it, then potentially what we could do with that half is, um, well, potentially we would just hold the duchy that we have all of. So say we held um, all of Frisia up here, but we didn't hold all of Holland down here. We only held like these couple. Well, then it might not create it. It might still create it, but it might not because we might not hold enough of the land to actually create it, and then that would help us with succession. So given that, both of these uh, duchies are fully held, I guess what we want to do is we want to take one off of our leash, and then we want to take the next one after succession. So we want to take, like, Holland, wait until there's a succession, and then take Frisia. And then we want to very quickly after that become a king, so we don't lose all of our titles, or we want to get partition, so we don't lose all of our titles. That's the plan, anyway. Um, yeah, I don't really know how we're going to achieve this plan, but that's the plan. Um, so, Liege has 1,500 troops, we have 724. We potentially have an ally in Zealand, which we could use. Zealand gives us 340, so potentially we got like a thousand troops that we can take away. Now, remembering her strength will drop down because um, we've revolted against her. So, it's not as uneven as you'd think. However, she is allied to Savoy, who gives them another 1,000 troops. Which will then mean that they are actually pretty much more powerful than us. Hmm. Our other option, of course, is our liege doesn't hate us. What we can do is we can just basically um, accept that we're going to lose one of them. Declare a war with the next character and take it back and live with it there. That's our other option, and that might be fine. Or, uh, are we the house head? We are the house head. We could, in theory, disinherit a child at some point. So, if we got a daughter, we could, in theory, disinherit the child that's got the worst education. And then, even if our son died, our daughter would actually then be in line, and then that fixes our issue. So, we could go for a slower path. That might be what we have to do. I don't know, I'm kind of just speaking out loud here. I don't really have a, dr a great plan. But, yeah. I suppose we... Did we marry you matrilineally? Yeah, we don't even need a daughter necessarily for this plan. We could just have our half-sister fill the plan. Because she would um, do that. Although, the problem is, if... Let, in this scenario, what would be happening is you're disinherited. You die. Half-sister inherits. You would then be in line to inherit through partition, I think. Which would then mean that we would have to do the same thing here. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. Thinking out loud, not a lot that we need to really do immediately. What it does mean is that potentially what we want to do is we want to matrilineally marry off our half-sister for just now. That's as far as I got on my planning. Sure. Let's do that. <laughs> um, all that to be like, yeah, I just want to matrilineally marry her. We're going to marry her for prowess. And... How about you? You seem fine. High prowess has an inheritable trait. Seems like a great choice because now that will give us another knight. Perfect. Let's do that. And unpause. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, we can declare war. I think it's. I think Denmark probably had a succession there. Uh, we can do a grand tournament, but we don't have enough money. We do a hunt, potentially, but we're not that stressed. We probably want to do one if we become stressed, I guess. Although we don't... Do we actually lose any fights? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Cool. It's feasts we don't lose anything with, right? Because we're uh, shy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's fine. We could also spend our money building up our holdings. Is there anything that we can actually build up here? Um, I think one of them I saw that we could build up to the next level, right? Yeah, we're just missing the gold. We can actually build up these holdings to the next level. Okay, so that might be worth doing. Cool. 
I mean, our leash doesn't hate us, so there's no, like, you know, immediate worry right now. We can just live our life as our character. And maybe go to Prince Archbishop Willibert's uh, Grand Tournament, which I'm assuming is this one. Yeah, okay. What? What is it? It's a board game tournament. Uh, that's a Marshall one, I think, probably. In Cologne? Sure. Let's go. Uh, is it dangerous? It's a little dangerous, yeah. Uh, how... Um, okay, activity starts on in January. Our estimated arrival is the 22nd of November. Let's try customizing our route. We've never done that before. So why are these dangerous? Um, is it because of the Ford? County control is why these are dangerous. So can we head this way or do we have to cross? We probably have to cross at this crossing, right? Out of that, we have to cross here and go through these county control ones. Yeah. But let's see, customize route. This is a bit weird. Add detours between each destination. Okay, so you'd have to be like, I'm gonna go here, and then I'll choose the shortest route. That's kind of weird. So if I said I wanted to go to um, Apeldoorn, I see. Yeah, so if I wanted to go this route round, I need to like, push ourselves out a little bit on that side. So I'd have to go and say I'm going to Arnhem. This is a very weird way of doing this, I gotta say. But I, I get why they've done it this way. That's okay, so that would then get us going down here. So then, on our return, I wanna say that we wanna go via there. Yeah, that does it, okay. And now we're only going through a couple of low dangers and one medium danger. Okay, what's the medium danger? Coastal sea adds a lot of danger, so let's add a coastal sea person. Yeah. That sounds fine, so that's going to lower that danger down a lot. Planes apparently adds in danger there as well. Planes adds in danger here. Have we got someone who can help us in planes? We just go for general safety. That might be okay. Um, Yeah, there doesn't appear to be any... One that just makes you better in planes. So let's just go with travel safety. There we go. So now we're now we're very safe. Now we only have 6% danger. Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's go. Yeah, I'm happy to go to this tournament. Um, also, who's our regent? That'll be our wife, I'm assuming. Yeah, she's a little self-interested. I, I told her to get me extra gold. Let's see how that goes. Mercenary captain has been hired. Alright. Of the hands of guard. That's cool. Fresh start. We are heading out. Let's go. I'm happy to just let us travel. We got no events whatsoever because the only one we could get an event in is here. I think the reason, by the way, why we had so many events going over this way to Wales, I figured it out, is because we had any chance of danger. I think if you have any chance of danger, an event can fire. If you have no chance of danger, no event will fire, as in no danger event will fire, so therefore you just go through. So this was the only square where we can have any trouble, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's the way it's working. All right, so we've arrived at the tournament. Wait a second, you're currently guaranteed to qualify? Oh, wow, we, we actually have a chance? I don't know what, what you need for board games to make them, um, like to be good enough to qualify, but that's okay. We are currently guaranteed. I'm interested in Triumph, then. Let's go. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to go to the tent camp. Meet the other contestants or sabotage. Maybe that could work. Is there anything that gives us a chance of doing better? Tourney grounds. Spending time here will increase your progress to victory. Okay, so that's where I want to go. I just love the idea that they're playing chess and this is the arena. That's um, just a very weird idea. Okay. My knights stand assembled for the day's training, their attendants laden with kit. Bertrand and myself stand before all. Knights, what you do not, uh, what you do not know, ask humbly to be taught, urges Bertrand. Together we represent the Count. Let us together prepare for our glories. He turns to me, eyes gleaming. Command us. Draw your swords? I can get, um, Hastilludur. Which I guess allows us to start actually getting um, traits. Okay, and every knight does it. Prove your keenness, both of eye and mind. Our score increases slightly, their scores increase slightly, and we get it. 
So why would I ever... I don't know why... Oh, because this changes what you get the traits in. Okay, I was going to say, why would you ever choose this option over this option? But we want this because we want wit. Best them all, Bertrand, now. He gains the trait. Okay, and may gain an impressive nickname. Watch our opponents and learn their weaknesses, which get increases scores moderately, but doesn't actually... Um, yeah, it doesn't actually give us this trait. We do need the trait because then we can start earning points towards it. So let's let's go with this. Yeah. Okay. Then I'd like to go here again. Can I? I can go here in 30 days, which is, yeah, going to be six days before we start. Perfect. That seems good. We're well qualified now. And then we can do the other um, thing that we need to do. Okay. I'm just going to let it tick down. This is fine. Three, two, one. Tourney grounds. Go, ill-fated. Go faster. I hear a man's voice echo through the grounds. I look up and see a small thing hurrying through the sky like a little black bolt of lightning. Soon enough, it swoops down towards a finishing line. Ah, you must have cheated. Your bird cannot fly that fast. Just look at her. She's barely a fledgling. The angry loser shouts with the winner looking smug. This is excellent entertainment. Must take a lot of preparation to do this. Gets us an increase um, moderately. Double or nothing, go again. 60% that I get some money or I don't have time for this. I'll take the moderate increase. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and now we're going. We have qualified for our first tournament and our knight, um, Imunder, qualified as well. The contestants take their place at the gaming tables, fluffing their cushions and requesting refreshments. As the Herald announces the contest commencement, the games themselves are arrayed out on trestle tables, pieces polished to a mirror sheen. The board game qualifiers have come to an end, and it's clear who will be put forward to the quarterfinals as it stands. The varied pitches and volumes of the crowd's cheers leave no question as to the favourites. For my first bout, I have been paired against my fellow contestant, Count Adelhard, the kind of Gruningen. Um, okay. He is not particularly good, at least in terms of having um, any experience. However, I don't know what trait goes into this. His stats appear to be better than mine. I have no idea what stats actually matter. Um, okay, so I can place a bet, or I can just say I am ready. Also, who's our knight against? Our knight... And Mundar, our steward, of great stats, is against Count uh, Ogier. Oh, wow. Those are fantastic stats on him as well. Well, I am ready. I vowed to myself I would win a, co a contest in this tournament. I can't help but consider a less fair approach to securing the prize of the board game competition. I'm sure who my opponent... I'm sure my opponents would do the same if only they had the idea. Who knows? Maybe they already have. So I'd say Edelhard is the threat. Ogier is the threat. Dietrich must be pacified or this is no way to win. I can lower his score significantly, but it's only a 33% chance. No, I think I think we stay out of this. Gazing quietly at the chessboard as Edelhard considers his next move, I suddenly spot it. Distracted in my idle strategizing, I've overlooked an opening which allowed me a clear advantage as long as my opponent has not anticipated it. I'm conscious not to make any outward sign of recognition lest I draw attention, scanning Edelhard's eyes for awareness or deception of a trap. So I do combined intrigue and learning challenges against him. Oh no, it's intrigue and learning? Oh no. <laughs> He's so good. I'm not better at him than any at anything, but intrigue and learning is not the good one. I say you're rather exposed, you know. It gets us closer to our friendship with him, or it's a ploy my current strategy is sound. I think we have to say our current strategy is sound because we have no other option. The soft click of moving pieces disturbs the calm. We are deep into the end game now, and the game hangs in the balance. I ponder what has already happened, such as when I saw the opportunity to take a risky but rewarding move. How this game ends is anyone's guess. The margin of victory is so small, and the cost of error is so large. So maybe I can draw from my knowledge of warfare. Unfortunately, 
his learning is so high that it doesn't give us a great chance, but it's almost it's a 50-50 of like at least neutral. Seem awfully sure of yourself. That's not a 50-50. Perhaps it's time for a daring move. Hey, look at this. This one's actually slightly better because it's 2% less there with intrigue, or playing it safe is the right move. That's a straight learning challenge. Hmm. I can't well actually that might be the best, right? Even though his learning is so much better. Oh, but that only gets us a say that only gets us slightly. We want a moderately. Let's choose this one. Let's go daring. We won? I think. The moment my hand leaves the playing piece, I know I've made a mistake. Oh no. And my opponent's artfully laid trap is sprung. A few more moves and I'm clearly disadvantaged by my error, forced into a position I didn't want at all. It's soon clear there is no coming back for Edelhard. Oh, never mind. Twi plot twist. Um, I grind him down, inexorably moving towards victory as his position weakens slowly but irretrievably. The judge call uh, calls an end. I have won. I will say, these events are cool. I would like it if they could fix some of... Um, like the text so that it matches what's happening because it feels like it's giving me an event as if I'm Count Edelhard but then it talks like I'm me you see what I'm meaning I think it would be much better if these events um just stuck to a perspective I think it's probably a bug but yeah it would be nice if it was slightly different anyway we won we knocked him out we're in the semi-finals and we had no right to be in the semi-finals Oh, he's been knocked out. That's our uh, knight got knocked out here. Okay, favorite contestant is this dude. I understand why. Um, his stats are incredible. He will win. Okay, back to the tournament. Okay, the Herald Booms. Earl Beolt uh, Mayor of East Sex, Count Waldger II of Holland, Count Ogier of Mew, and... Balderich have reached the semi-finals. My next bout will be against my fellow contestant, Balderich. I mean, honestly, it could be worse. Was he their best one to be matched up against? Hmm, they were all significantly better than me at everything. Yeah, I think he might be our best because the learning is not quite as big a gap. Like, our learning is bad, but, you know, isn't, like... Not as bad comparing 20 to 30. I can just say I concede. No, I can do this. I think I can do this. Okay. The table flips with an almighty thwack, sending the chess pieces flying. Alderich's mood uh, turned suddenly several moves ago as he realized the simple mistake he had, uh, he had all... A simple mistake he had all but decided the game in my favor. Yes, yes, you win, Count Waldger, he whines. Happy? Pick them up, I need to make my last move. Let's go back a few moves. He likes us, or, you know, you could have just conceded. I'll spend the prestige, you should have just conceded. I won. Least, um, likely finalist here. Oh, no. Um, the bout between Count Ogier and Earl... Biotmar has been decided after an unsatisfyingly one-sided bout. No one was surprised when Ogier faced Biotmar in a, into a position of forfeit. Ogier is through to the final. We are about to get destroyed. He almost has 40 learning. That's incredible. Is it because these give learning? Yeah, Scholar gives learning and then that gives plus two learning. Then he's chased, which gives learning. And yeah, okay, I see. A fine contest. 33% it reckons this time. Alright. I can do this. Um, being part of a crowd at sporting events can be a real treat. I'm not part of the crowd, I'm playing the game. The atmosphere, the sound, and the sights. Only problem is, it can sometimes bring as many downsides as it does boons. One such downside has just materialized as I find myself stuck behind a large frame of rubber. I lead first one way, then the other, but his sheer size occludes the action almost perfectly. I sigh loudly and tap my foot. Robert doesn't budge. Cheers ring out as something huge and exciting ha happens. My collier begins to rise. I'll make you kneel to watch. I gain the trait wounded. 
I grow closer to getting a friendship with him. And he gets brutally mauled. Oh my lord. Okay. Excuse me, could you please move? Or never mind. I'm going to say, excuse me, could you please move? Okay. He did. The Puppet Master. My game against Count Ogier of Mew has gone very poorly. He is playing at a level I wouldn't have thought possible. I notice his eyes keep darting into the crowd and seems to be looking directly at a figure standing almost directly behind me. They're performing subtle hand gestures and moving their lips, no doubt giving Ogier instructions. Judge, he's cheating. Mmm. <laughs> well, 6% chance they believe me. My moves must become unpredictable. I'll just focus on the game. Yeah, just focus on the game. You will lose because you're bad at the game. If, my, if I don't know what I'm doing, my opponent doesn't know what I'm doing. That is our strategy. That did not work. Check. The soft uh, click of moving pieces disturbs the calm. We are deep into the end game now and the game hangs in the balance. I ponder what's already happened, such as when my opponent overturned the table entirely with an almighty crash. No, no, that was, that was the previous game. You see, this is what I'm meaning. Some of this doesn't actually line up with what happened. It's, it's a bit odd. Like, I definitely feel like it needs some more context put in here. I'm losing and my position is worsening almost every move. It would take something of a miracle to win from here. Mm-hmm. 33%. My best... Oh, that's only slightly, though. I need it to be moderate. So 30% is our best. I think this is our best one because it's 30% 30, 30 and he's got 2% of like some weirdness happening that isn't one of these three. We lost. Fair enough. We were the worst player. The moment my hand leaves a playing piece I know I've made a mistake and my, and my opponent's artfully laid trap has sprung. You see this makes much more sense coming from our perspective. Okay, a few more moves and I'm clearly disadvantaged by my error forced into position I didn't want at all. Moments later, I realize at last the danger of my position. Ogier has been baiting me from the start. It seems that every move I make is a compromise, losing inch by inch to a superior play. All too soon, my position becomes untenable. The judge calls an end. I have lost. Confound it. Oh well, we, we came second though. Trumpet sound, the crowd clamors, competitors begin to assemble. The contest is over and someone's limelight is being readied. A herald steps forward, a voice booming out across the scene. After many trials, some tribulations, and above all else, some truly spirited competition, Count Ogier beats Count Waldger in the final. Ogier is our winner. I did not win, but I came very close. So, he gains uh, prestige, 20 gold, and grandmaster for five years, which gets him some nice stuff. And we'll get a prize, but we get tabletop player, which gets us learning, min maximum battle roll. We get some experience gain, and we get a little bit of money and prestige back. And then, yeah, everybody gets tabletop player. Sure, that wasn't too bad. Oh, there's a new culture, Lichenburger, which is divergent culture of Bavarian. Right. That is the end of that. Um, he has got a prize ring, which is very nice for him. And we will move on. I gained experience in wit. Which means we're now almost at level 1 wit, which would get us some diplomacy. Nice. Okay. That wasn't too bad. We might go to another board game tournament. And now it is time for us to return home. Travel? What the duck? The day on the road has become fairly calm and nondescript so far. We are on the out side of Neas, and I close my eyes as my mount brings me forward one solid step at a time. As the wind plays a magnificent melody through the treetops, another sound is carried by the breeze, and not from our entourage. Is that quacking? I isolate the sound to be coming from a shrubbery on my right hand side. That's a good omen. Follow that duck, or ick, pesky fowl, away. Follow the duck. I dismount and locate the duck on a nearby, in the nearby shrubbery. It starts waddling off into the wilderness and I follow by foot. Suddenly the duck stops and tilts its head in my direction, clearly confused as to why it has procured a human follower. Um, I smile at the duck, trying to ease the tension, but the duck suddenly squirms, flapping its wings and flies away. What a wild duck chase? Okay. Well, we're heading back, but you see how that wasn't a danger event? 
That, that's what I was meaning. I think that you get danger events on the other side, although this might be a danger event. Anyway. An imposing man is standing on the road ahead of us. I am Walter of Wessel. I have bested dozens of men in combat. And honestly, all those fights were dull. So here I am on this road looking for someone better than me that I can learn from. Um, if you can best me in combat, I will become a valuable and loyal servant. And so, on this day, I demand to meet one of you in a fair fight. Well, not us. Um, your whole entourage tramples Walter. <laughs> oh, no. It's delayed by 30 days? You might be less valuable after I win. Well, I'm not going to win. Or Ian Frith will show you how it's done. Yes, he will absolutely destroy him, but that's fine. It, whatever happens, we're delayed by 30 days. On you go. He wins the fight. Oh, see, now we got a danger event. Wait a second, how are we getting a danger event here? Because we had 0% danger, right? I thought we had 0% danger. Yeah, a 1% danger, actually. It was 0 going there, but it's 1% on the way back. So then we got a danger event. Okay. I'm starting to think the percentages might not be right, but anyway. Once more, on the, road, uh, once more the road ahead is dangerous. So, for safety, we have to settle for the night. While the others set up camp, I, count, I catch... You'll land up at uh, picking up another unknown fruit. Admire your curiosity, Yolanda. Um, I smile, but she gives me a mischievous look instead, then bursts. I'm sorry, my brother, I cannot help myself, as she tries to sink her teeth into the fruit. Stop putting everything into your mouth, or let her eat it. Uh, I'm going to tell her to stop putting everything into her mouth. She got an unknown plant rash, and I gained an unknown plant rash. Th thanks. Thanks, really pretty. It's, wait, it's, it's, I gained it, right? Yeah. They got a health penalty and attraction penalty. That's just not good. Travel. The trodden path. The procession is ground to a halt, a stone's throw away from Zuf Zutfen. When I look over to see my fellow traveler, Wernek, uh, dismount and intently stare at something on the ground. The other entourage members have gathered around him. Wernek looks up as I approach. My lord, there is an ant path here. Right? I might be a tad superstitious, but you should never cross an ant path. He pauses. My great-grandmother did, and she never returned home. Fine, we'll find another path. We close to getting a friendship, or nonsense, I'll take over as guide. I will uh, find another path. Okay. A foreign treat. It's not the first time I catch my courtier, Yadranka, fiddling around some flowers she's been picking up along the road. Sometimes I'd swear I even hear um, her singing, overlooking Arnhem's holding. My liege, she says, when I, as she notices I've been observing her. It's not a secret that my heart has found a new home far from, from home. Alas, my liege, my soul aches for Bernard. Are you not married? No. Okay. My soul aches for Bernard. My desire knows no end. His eyes, his hair... I long just for a salute. I die for a word. Please, I beg you, let me stay with him. His stats are incredible. Who am I to interfere? You're coming home with me. Or we can welcome you both. I'm shy, however. I don't really want more stress. You know what? Go away. Yeah, that's fine. She will go somewhere else. Oh, no. Weird whispers. I've noticed that Guntroda... Who? My court physician? Really? Okay, anyway. Uh, avoids me more than usual. She always sits at the opposite end of the table whenever we're invited to a feast and constantly refuses my company when while camping. We may not have the best of relationships, but that attitude's starting to tire me, especially when I overhear her defaming me. Waldger is a brooding scullion. Way, I'd be a way better count than him. Want to know how it is? I'll show you. We, we do a fight. Okay. We gain mutiny humiliation. Get out of my sight now, or we take some stress hits. Oh, I, I can't take the stress hit. I need to challenge her to a fight, and she's gonna. Oh, I have to make. This makes her leave anyway? Oh no. So I need to just take a, uh, a hit somewhere. I guess I'll just say, is that the wind I hear? Well, there's the stress hit. Hunted by the past. A, st a stiff drink solves most problems. I'm going to go on a drinking binge. Which gets us bottom of the barrel. And drinking binge, which lowers all of our stats. Wonderful. Or I can go to a whorehouse. Which only gets us lost in lust. You know, this one might actually be better. 
Yeah. We're going to become rakish. We've arrived back. We gained experience in horse, apparently. That's good. Uh, I'll never forget the moment I had an awkward moment with a duck. I followed into the wilds of the Neus farmlands. Yes. What, what's a... What's a journey where we uh, found a duck, duck, had an awkward com uh, conversation with it, and uh, it was really dangerous in those farmlands. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. We did, w well, we came second in the tournament, which is our best placing yet, and we learned some stuff. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.